Lorella Springs is a million acre property perched right at the base of the Gulf of Carpentaria. I've been up exploring the edge of this place, finding where the land meets the sea, but it's time now to head back south and explore the hinterland of Lorella Springs, the wild interior, which is kept alive by the creeks and streams that bring all the life to this place, human and animal. That's full of crocodiles, barramundi, mangrove jacks, there's bird life everywhere. So I'm looking forward to immersing myself in that dark interior and seeing a whole other side of this landscape. Nothing is easy in the top end. The tides up here can be random, they shift all day long, and you never know what you're gonna get. And we seem to be a bit landlocked with the boat here, can't quite make it out to the mouth. So we're gonna load the boat up, which in itself is a Herculean feat, given there's no boat ramp here. It's gonna be a little bit interesting. Hopefully up there we can throw a line in, throw the pots in, and try our luck there. That's it, and hold it there. This is the interesting part. So we are basically got to get the boat onto the trailer, which anywhere else is pretty simple. But here, you've got to constantly be croc aware. So Craig's back there, right at the water's edge, paying attention, I hope. And we're going to get the boat up onto the trailer. And then comes part two, getting everything out of the water. Given the constant danger of crocs, I found the safest way to get your boat on the trailer around here is to get someone else to do it. Mate, surprisingly, that was the easy bit. We're still gonna get this whole assembly up the sandbank. It's pretty soft up there actually, so uh, we'll get the winch out, eh, and um, give it a go. Yep. I've learned a lot of lessons about winching over the years. Probably the biggest thing that I've changed recently is only using models that are waterproof. There's nothing worse than having a broken winch when you need it. This Bush Ranger seal winch is perfect for a trip up here, where you're doing water crossings just about every day. The important thing with winching is always be safe, put a dampener on the winch and everything else, but also pick a good anchor point. Little trees do not work, you really need something solid like this, you're going to be pulling a couple of ton or more on there. So I'm going to put a tree protector on here. Not only does it protect the tree, but it gives me a solid place to anchor to and it stops the winch having to wrap around and hook onto itself. That provides a breaking point there, which is not what you want when you're doing this. Now we're using synthetic rope here for the winch. It's 10 times safer than the old winch cable. And much better to work with, but we're still gonna throw a dampener on it because you never know what can happen out here and we wanna be as safe as we can. The driver should always be in control of the winch, but it does help to have someone spotting things well out of the way in case something starts to go wrong. I like to keep the wheels just spinning when I'm winching up soft sand. It helps to keep them on top of the sand and takes a bit of load off the winch motor as well. The trick is to balance things out so you don't put slack in the cable. She's clear of the ledge, mate. You're good. I love this stuff. Just getting out amongst it, pulling all the gear out. This is actually more fun than catching fish sometimes. This trip, I'm a little obsessed with the idea of chasing the edge. Up here, that often translates into shores, riverbanks, beaches, and beyond. Those borders between elements, between worlds. As much as I'd love to spend every day out on the water, Lorella is such a big place with a million spots to explore. Before we embarked into the heart of darkness though, we had one more side trip, which could mean a free, freshly caught dinner. Out on the tidal flats roams a crustacean whose looks belie his taste, the humble mud crab, the food of the gods in my book. So we've come out here to the creek inlet and this is the perfect spot to put down some crab pots. A couple things you're looking for if you're searching for muddies. These tidal plains are perfect because the guys come out of their holes as the tide starts to come in and they're looking for food that the ocean's bringing in on that fresh tide. So you put your stuff down when it's nice and dry like this let the tide come up, and when it comes back out, check your pots. Nine times out of 10, you'll have a few crabs in there. Mate, I think we're ready to go here. Yep. This looks like where I'm putting mine, I'm claiming that. There's lots of crab holes here. 
Looks like it's going to be Action City as soon as the tide comes up. Where are you going to go? Uh, I think I'm going to put mine right there, so they have to go past my pot before they get to yours. What do you reckon about that? Sounds fair to me. <laughs> All right, let's do it. The trick with potting mangrove flats is dropping your pots on dead low tide and coming back once the water has risen and dropped again, hopefully to collect dinner. Ooh.